it's funny to me because you all play the game as we've talked about earlier in this recording of, okay, here's the world we live in, (laughs) but like at the same time, you kind of just do your thing. The framework of how you all structure the show, you're all very talented designers, very experienced. You know what you're doing at this point, but you have those aspects of this is the world we live in. We have to try to get points where we can doing X, Y, Z, but there's also a huge element of we do what we do. We know what we do produces yeah. a good product and we're going to stick to that at the core of it at the end of the day. And then we'll, we'll do things here and there to, to play along with what's going on. But we know we're going to put a good product out doing what we've been doing for years. And we kind of stick but, to that at the end of the day. You know, and I guess I'm tainted because I see it every day, but when you say that we do what we do, I think we're different every year. I don't think we do the same thing at all. I know battery wise, we're always trying to find new vocabulary. What can we do different? Sometimes it's it works, approach. sometimes it doesn't. I feel like when I say you all do what you do, it's the, the approach. When you walk up to the Blue Devil's Horn line in the lot, when you walk up to the front ensemble, the guard, whatever, you know it's the Blue Devils is kind of what I'm getting at, I feel like. I, you all have or, very varied shows from year to year. I 100% yeah. agree with you, and as, as an audience member, it's very distinct, and it's, I appreciate that about the Blue Devils as well, especially more and more the older I get and the more I learn about everything and how this whole world works. Now that works. I don't have to compete against you. Yeah. Um, I, but, I think that the, yeah, go ahead. Uh, what Fantini's talking about, the approach is, it, you said the same thing, the show comes first. Like, that doesn't change. Which seems simple enough, but other some people, I don't know, you get in your own head sometimes and you start thinking about, well, what about this? What about this? What about me? What about me? Uh, but I think as in you do what you do, it's the way that you guys do it and the way that you operate, the way that you design the show, the way that you teach the show. Like there is a structure there that is pretty unique, I would say, as far as like the way they stage it and then they chart it later. That's definitely not the approach that most organizations take. Well, and, and I mean, don't get me wrong. Um, we would love to win percussion every year and win brass every year and win color guard every year and win visual every year, which we kind of almost do. But that's my, that's the, that's the Rudy's. That's, that's the drum staff. That's the drummers. That's what they're in charge of. That's all they have control over. I mean, I have control over more than they do. Right. So I look at the big picture more than anybody, more than my staff, obviously, but what they have control over, I mean, is they, they want to win that dang drum trophy. And sometimes, they disagree with me and making a few calls going, no, it's going to be better upstairs. We've got to do this change, which might cost us downstairs a tick or two, a tenth or two. But you got to do it for if it's going to be worth it upstairs. I'll take, you know, a tenth upstairs over a tenth downstairs any day. If that's if you got to weigh that out. Right. And some of the guys will disagree with that at times. But that's, you know, that's why I have veto power. I'm the old guy. So it always works. <laughs> <laughs> the wisdom. Uh... Or no, just the old guy. <laughs> <laughs> I think another thing unique about you and just your relationship to the core is the amount of time that i see you with the core uh a lot of the times now you see these staff announcements and there's like 10 snare techs or seven quad techs or five basics base techs and i i get that because they're trying to like make sure that people can not put all of life on hold people have lives outside of drum um you know still make a living absolutely absolutely but you all have the luxury in position to where it seems like you're there 90 85 percent of the time and rudy's there a lot of the time and the guys that are on there they're on there a lot of the time um so i think that does present a unique continuity that just other groups don't have it's 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 consistency yeah Yeah, i mean that's pretty much what it is i mean it's it's easy to just say it's consistent you know i mean i i do more road than i should (laughs) <laughs> on tour i mean I, I live on that bus pretty much last year i did um god i think out of like 50 days as of maybe like 42 you know on tour um rudy does most of the tour if not all of it he takes a week off in early season but then he's on for everything else so the the performers are getting consistent feedback all the time you know, we I might have a bet. snare tech come in or every now and then and switch but i guarantee you those snare techs who came through this program are saying the same thing. I would bet if you look at all of the top percussion sections or the majority of them, they have the most staff consistency throughout the entirety of the summer compared to other groups that don't finish as highly as them. Now there's, there's talent differentials, there's design differentials, but in terms of, like you just said, they're getting consistent information. 
I don't know how the whole Rennick organization works or how many different techs they have coming in and out, but I would bet even whether it's two for the whole summer or five, they all have the same thought process and how they approach hitting sure. the drum. They all sure. came through that Rennick program or with you guys, if you have to have bring in a couple techs, like you just said, they all have the same background. And I bet when no, you look no, at those top, no. top four or five percussion sections, those staffs are going to be as consistent as humanly possible throughout the entire, entire summer. Years ago, I had a, uh, someone sent me their resume that wanted to teach the battery, you know, and I said, well, I don't know you. Um, what have you done? You know, and I was trying to be nice. And then I finally go, listen, I, I hire my friends. I hire the guys that came through the Blue Devil program because I know they know what we do and they know the philosophy that I teach and that they're going to carry on. And I go, so I hire my friends. And so the guy, he got like real violent and sent an email to our director saying, I can't believe Scott Johnson only hires friends. How, how does, what does that mean for everybody else? You know, and he just went off on my director. And, I, and it, at the time it was Dave Gibbs, the director. And I, I told Dave, I go, I hope you lit him up. <laughs> I hope he didn't let that just slide through. I go, I hired the guys that I know are going to teach well yeah. and teach what we do. You, you basically know? hire people you know is basically well, what you're selling him. People I you mean, trust. Yeah, you trust and, is, I mean. And you got to get along. It's a long yeah. summer. It's a long season. Yes, and grind. guess what? You're living together. Yeah. If there's you're any gonna, issues at all, it's not going to be good. Period. You're going to argue. So, you got to know how to argue with somebody you know. Like, it's it's different when you're arguing with someone who sees the opposition as like, we're both trying to do the right thing. We just don't agree on this thing. Uh <laughs> Versus somebody's like, I don't know if you know that we're trying to do the right thing here or not, yeah. or if you're just trying to get your way. So, right, right, <laughs> yeah. But it was it was um, it was funny. I almost wanted to fly the guy out and just put him in front of the drum line and say, "Okay, go," because the drum line would probably eat him up. 